All right, I think it's on. What's up, guys? So, wanted to bring in a quick video with the uh, Tesla Model 3 here, performance. Um, some things I tried with it and, you know, what not to do and what I don't recommend uh, from what I tried. Um, so what that is, is I tried Uber in the Tesla for probably three weeks and then quit immediately because it sucked. And I will say my dad was like, Bryce, don't Uber in your new car, it's gonna suck. And I was like, no, no, whatever, I'm gonna try it, right? Which, you know, most, most kids do, they just, whatever, I'm not gonna listen to my parents, whatever, right? Um, and as a person, that's kind of how I am. I, you know, I don't see it as a flaw. I see it as more of a, I wanna try something for myself and see how it is. And if I don't like it, then I'm not gonna do it as far as like making money and, you know, trying new things. Um, that's just how I am. So I tried it, found out it sucked and never gonna do it again. Now, I wrote down some like Ubering and Tesla notes here, which I'll read off. Uh, what are some pros to Ubering the Tesla? It's easy money, right? What's a con to the easy money? Uh, it's not taxed. So what does not taxed mean? That means at the end of the year, right? Um, you're gonna have to pay taxes on the money you made Ubering. Now, thankfully, um, I could put it up on the screen what I made in the Uber wallet on, uh, it should appear on the display here, but I made about maybe 278 or something like that. I'm going off of memory. Maybe the number that you're seeing is a little different, but that was my cash out. I cashed out all my money from Ubering for a week. This was one week of doing Uber. I made about 278. Now, I don't know if that has something that needs to be reported um, at the end of 2023. Um, or whenever I do my taxes next year because it's such a little amount, but I think any amount has to be reported as income, so I probably will. And Uber does supply you with some kind of a form, a tax form, so you can show your, uh, you know, the amount of money you made doing Uber that wasn't taxed. Uh, what's another pro for Uber? Tips. Tips are another pro for Uber. Um, the problem with tips is consistency, and that is not everyone is going to tip. Um, so I had a, a pretty nice couple that I gave an Uber to to the airport, which, uh, word of advice, at least here in New Orleans, airport rides, biggest money maker there is. It's like 20, 25 for an airport ride. And most of the airport rides from what I did, they give you a tip because you're driving, um, a little further usually than you would going somewhere local from like city to city. Um, but so anyway, I had this airport couple gave them a ride, really nice couple. They uh, gave me a $20 tip after the ride. They gave me 10 and then another 10, right? And then the ride fare itself was like 25. So I made about 45 off of one ride. That's pretty good. Problem with that is again, not everyone tips. So you're gonna get maybe one out of 10 people or one out of 100 people that tip. It's really low, like most people don't. Um, and that's just, you know, people, even if you give them a really good ride, some people don't have money to tip or whatever the reason may be, right? Wherever they don't wanna tip. Um, the next pro for Uber, and this is also a con, is location. Uh, if you're in a really good location for Uber, you'll get rides all the time. You Every five minutes, you'll drive somebody off and you'll get another ride request. Um, or you might get a ride request in the middle of doing a ride, you get another ride request that you can accept. And that works really well with like Uber X where you're um, pulling people for Uber. Um, problem with the con with that is, is location and that's the areas, the rides, how the roads are, the potholes. Here in New Orleans, roads trash. If you go in the city, I'm in the outskirts of the city, I'm not actually in New Orleans, I may be 10 minutes away from New Orleans in the outskirts, but if you go in the city, there are big potholes and they're doing some construction right now in the city, different areas, and there's big drops, like a foot, maybe, okay, maybe I'm exaggerating, half a foot deep. And when you hit that, if you're in a low riding car, the Model 3 Performance sits five and a half inches, yeah, five and a half inches off the ground. That's your ride height. And that's for both the Performance model and the rear wheel drive model three and the long range. I think they're all um, five and a half inches off the ground. That's pretty low riding. My Taurus, I think was seven inches off the ground. Um, the Taurus is an old car I used to have before I got the Model 3 Performance. Um, but that's really low. With that being so low, if you hit one of those um, half inch freaking dips where they're doing construction, you're scraping the bottom. And this happened to me actually when I dropped somebody off from doing an Uber ride. I was driving and I heard like the scraping noise from the bottom of the car because I didn't see, well, it's not that I didn't see it, but as I was coming up on this dip, there was nowhere for me to avoid it because it was the road. They were just doing construction and there was that big of a dip in the road from them doing construction. So it wasn't like you could just drive out of the way of it and avoid it. I couldn't avoid it, so I just had to hit it, and I did hit it going a little fast because it was a little late. But with that being said, I hit this this dip in the road, and it scraped the bottom of the car. You know, made it home, checked all under the car. Thankfully, it didn't see any damage. 
but it definitely hit something. I just don't know what. I can't see anything that scraped. Um, so location could be a pro for rides, but also could be a con depending on how your roads are. Um, next thing is, uh, okay, I have a Tesla. I don't have gas, right? So I'm not fueling up the car. Um, I get home. I, I, had, I have a home charger, a level two wall charger, official Tesla, of course. Plug it in. Um, charge the car up overnight, right? It's maybe $30 a month, if that, on the electric bill. It's really not that much, um, which is great. It's way cheaper than gas. I was paying maybe $60, $70 to fuel up my Taurus, um, and that only had like an 18-gallon tank. Um, so it's way cheaper than gas, right? You get home, let it charge overnight. You wake up, it's, it's ready to go in the morning. Um, it's a great system. But the con to that is, okay, even though you're saving all this money on gas, what you're doing is you're, you know, you're putting damage and wear on the internal of your vehicle and on the external because if you're driving on the road more, you're more prone to rock chips, potholes, like I just stated, uh, your tire is wearing, uh, which this is a performance model, so it's 20-inch Pirellis, um, which don't already don't have a lot of tread life because they're performance um, summer tires or whatever they are, all seasons or something. Um, so that you're degrading your vehicle. My dad told me all of this, of course, you know, again, I didn't listen. I just was, well, I'm going to try it, right? Um, it's pretty bad because then another con to this is um, added insurance costs. I'm with uh, Progressive Insurance. Progressive, there's ride share. If you're doing ride share, uh, you have to add ride share insurance onto your plan. Otherwise, you're not covered to do ride share and they could drop you or whatever other horrible things the insurance company might do. Um, and the other thing, is uh, with cost of that is danger to your own personal safety, which you know I've in previous videos stated New Orleans sucks. Crime rate, horrible. Look it up. Like if you're not from New Orleans, just Google it. Google the crime rate of New Orleans. It's like the highest crime rate city. Ridiculous. That I, I stay away from New Orleans itself because there are a lot of bad areas in the actual city. Stay on the outskirts, these other little cities around New Orleans. That's, that's where I'm at. It's a little better on crime rate, still pretty bad because New Orleans is there. So a lot of those people, you know, converse and etc and then there's a lot of tourists and other things going on but danger so what i mean by that right somebody gets in i while i was ubering i um i put the the front seat up here um kind of like all the way up a lot of the time so whoever was sitting there could uh or no no one could sit there should i say because i had the seat all the way up um but with that i'll put people in the back so to help with this i got this back seat cover here which i can link in a, in the description to where i got this that's not a big problem and then i got this cover here this dickies cover for this seat which it doesn't perfectly fit but it's better than nothing um this kind of helps a little bit with the internal degradation of the car but you still have the tires that are getting messed up and when going back to danger if somebody gets back here and they put a gun in the back of the seat and they're like drive well, all right they can't steal the tesla because you know Tesla's a track through the app, and they ha I have a pin to drive on it, so even if they get out and come to get back in, there's still a pin to drive. They can't drive it. To my knowledge, it's on, I think, Linux OS, so it's like, it can't really be hacked, I don't think. You'd have to break it before you would try and hack it, and even if they did, I could still track it with the Tesla app. Um, you can limit the top speed, so it has all these safety features. The car being stolen was not a concern. That's why I never use a club on the, uh, on the Tesla, because I don't need it. It's got its own club. It's got pin to drive. The ingenious pin to drive. You're like, why doesn't every car have this? Put a pin to drive. You need a pin. What? You know, um, like it, it makes sense. These these things make sense. But it's the danger to personal safety. Even if I have the gun in the car with me, my, my gun I own, um, uh, I have a, you know, 38 special long barrel, right? If I have this in the car, um, even if I have this, it's not going to do any good if they've already got the gun on me. It's only good if, you know, I were to know this person was coming, this attacker was coming, then it would be a deterrent, right? But not if they already have it on me. So that risk of that happening is horrible. And I you know I'll tell you a story. I'm trying to keep this video not too long, um, but I'll tell you a story. And that's I had two drunk ladies get in the back of the car, and one of them was grabbing all on me. Oh, oh, let me strip you down. All this, and I'm like, what the frick are you doing? Like, and they were. It was a quick five minute drive too. I maybe made five bucks on the ride. Wish I would have never took it. And there was one sitting there and one sitting there, right? And then the lady, because she's drunk, starts thinking that the white uh, vegan leather is some kind of cover and tries pulling the cover off of the seat. And I'm like, what are you doing in my car? So when they got out and I dropped them off, they didn't want to step out the car. And the lady was coming all up to the door here and and everything else. And I'm like can you back away from my car? And then I just told her firmly and like, um, you know, I didn't want to have to call the cops or anything because that, that night this happened was actually the first night I Ubered 
um, in the Tesla. And I think that was a sign from God or something like, hey, you don't need to be doing this. Um, so I'm going to give you these two really bad people. That way you realize you don't need to be doing this. Um, and two weeks after that, I stopped Ubering. And I'm never going to Uber again. I'm, I need to actually take this decal off the window now that I had put up because it was long enough that they actually had time to send me a decal. Um, but that's all my pros and cons, but I want to I wanna share some of the stuff and the internal damage of why I wouldn't do it. There's a mark on the back of the seat, which I'll show, and there's a mark in the trunk, which I'll show I'm opening now in the back. Um, and that's why I don't recommend Ubering in a Tesla or any vehicle. It's too dangerous, uh, depending on your area. You're not going to get very many rides. Most of the rides are like $5 unless you get a ride to the airport or somewhere longer, which then it'll be a good chunk more money. Um, and it's just, it's not worth it for your, like the money you make, you have to pay taxes on at the end of the year, unless you calculate the taxes yourself. So with the taxes out, it's really not that much money. Just don't do it. Find, find something else. And I'm not hating on those that do Uber. If you do, cool. If you like it, great. I'm just saying it didn't work for me. What does, what does that mean for the long run? Like what, what, what does that mean? I'm going to be looking at in terms of degradation to the car in the long run. And for those of you that don't know, I don't plan on keeping the Model 3 unless something changes because of the Cybertruck. The Model 3 performance for me is, um, you know, something where I could get a new car where I wasn't, you know, having to pay all these repair bills on, on the Taurus I had um, and not have to pay for gas anymore because I want to stay with Tesla from all my future vehicles, which is why I, you know, had the um, Level 2 wall charger installed, which I think you can see back there. Um, so I plan on staying with the Tesla, you know, infrastructure and getting a Cybertruck. So why I don't want to damage the Model 3 and degrade the trade-in value, um, before I get the Cybertruck. But anyway, that's my thoughts on Ubering and the Tesla Model 3 performance, why I don't recommend doing it and why I'm not doing it anymore. And that's some of my experiences. So take this video as you will, make your own decisions if you want to try it. Go for it, just be safe.